all fronts and by making the opioid crisis the primary focus of today's cabinet meeting the president is once again showing that is one of his top priorities there's a long road ahead and much work to be done but we will not rest until our streets are safe our families are secure and the victims of this terrible e epidemic are able to live a life free of addiction as the president noted yesterday and again today during the cabinet meeting the chemical weapons attack by Syrian regime against innocent civilians is horrifying. The images, especially of suffering children, have shocked the conscience of the entire civilized world. Sadly, these actions are consistent with the side's established pattern of chemical weapons use. His forces are already responsible for previous chemical weapons attacks and other actions targeting civilians. The President has noted that Russia and Iran also bear responsibility for these acts since they would not be possible without their material support. It is also now clear that Russia has betrayed its obligations to guarantee the end of the Syrian regime's chemical weapons program. The President and his national security team are consulting closely with allies and partners to determine the appropriate response. As President Trump clearly stated, there will be a price to pay. We call on all members of the international community to share any information related to this attack and to hold the perpetrators and their sponsors accountable. And we call upon the Syrian regime and Russia to open the area to international medical assistance and international monitoring. And with that, I'll take your questions. John. Uh, the President uh, was pretty definitive today in saying that this was a, an attack with banned chemical weapons, yet there hasn't been a concrete proof of that. Russia insists that there is no evidence of chemical weapons. What makes the president so sure that he is willing to make such a declarative statement? Uh, the president is confident. He's been uh, briefed by his national security team and being kept up to date uh, constantly and regularly um, on the intelligence around that. And I can't get any further beyond that at this do point. Have, do we have any proof at this point that it was, in fact, a chemical weapon? Once again, I can't get anything beyond uh, the comments that we've already made, but we're very confident in uh, those comments. See you there. Just a couple of weeks ago, the president was talking about wanting to leave Syria very quickly. Now you're saying that there's a price that has to be paid. Does the president believe that there are some things that are so atrocious, which is the phrase he used this morning, that the United States is, in fact, the world's policeman? And it demands a response. It demands the presence of the United States government in the region. Look, the president uh, wants to bring our troops home after we complete the mission to eradicate ISIS in Syria. At the same time, he wants to make sure Assad is deterred from chemical weapons attacks on innocent civilians, signaling we want to remove our troops in no way degrades our ability to hold parties responsible. Mike. Has, has the president been briefed that his comments about wanting to leave Syria could have played a part and have emboldened Assad and played a part in, in, in these attacks? Uh, the only individuals that played a part uh, don't reside in this country, and I think we've made very clear who we think uh, is responsible for these attacks, and to try to conflate that and make uh, this on any part uh, and blame on this president is absolutely well, he ridiculous. He has criticized others for signaling uh, military plans. It seems to be what he was doing here. Does he regret those comments that he made last week? The president's been clear that he wants to make sure uh, that we have the defeat of ISIS. We've also been clear in our actions, as you have seen, uh, after previous chemical attacks, what this president uh, has done. And I think we've been very uh, upfront on that. Sarah. 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 Hey, first, uh, the news out of this morning about apparent strikes uh, carried out overnight. Um, it, does the United States believe that Israel was behind those strikes as, as the number of reports planned? It, was, it, was the United States given a heads up by the Israeli government? Uh, I can only speak on behalf of this government. Uh, for questions on that, I would refer you outside. I can tell you at this time the United States is not conducting airstrikes in Syria, but I can't go beyond that at this point in time. No, the White, so from the White House perspective, was a, did the White House get a heads up from any foreign government about conducting strikes in Syria? Again, I can't go any further uh, than commenting on behalf of our government, and I can tell you that currently at this time the United States is not conducting airstrikes in Syria. Back on the deterrence uh, for a sec, uh, for a moment, you said the President wants to make sure that there uh, that there's uh, that, uh, there's the Assad regime can't conduct uh, attacks like this in the, in the future. Last year when the President launched those cruise missiles, he had said there was a deterrent, obviously. What has changed between uh, you know, sort of months ago when the Assad regime wasn't using chemical weapons and this, this strike now? Was, it seemed to be the timing coming so, so soon after President making that, that determination on 
Uh, I, I, I wanted to pull U.S. troops out of Syria. That there was, that it, it, you can see why we're drawing the, time, the timing there. So why, in the, the president's estimation, is did his deterrence, uh, did his attempt to sort of establish a deterrent effect on the Assad regime now failing? Uh, once again, the president has made clear that with the defeat of ISIS, he wanted to be able to bring our troops home. Um, but at the same time, he wants to make sure that Assad is deterred from chemical weapons attacks on innocent civilians. We think you can't have separation. John. Sarah. But, but sir, didn't the president, by saying that he wants to get out of Syria, essentially give a green light to Assad to do this, as John McCain has suggested, that the United States was leaving, wasn't was kind of pulling up and leaving it to... Look, we're still there. And I think that it is outrageous to say that the President of the United States greenlit uh, something as atrocious as the actions that have taken place over the last several days. Uh, the President once again made very clear how he feels about those types of actions uh, when this took place roughly a year ago. And um, we're going to continue looking at all of our options on the table currently. Well, Robert Roberto. Anderson, that, that emboldened Assad. That this was sending a message to Assad. Is that still his position? I think the message that we sent to Assad was very clear, both in the President's words uh, over the weekend and in our actions that we've taken in the past. Roberta. Has the President's attitude toward Vladimir Putin changed because of what's happened? Uh, the President has always been tough on Russia, as he said last week, as I echoed again uh, when asked about it. This administration and this President have been tougher on Russia than previous administrations. Um, I think you can see that both through the actions that we've taken and in the comments over the last uh, several days. But he singled out Vladimir Putin in the tweet yesterday. Does he feel that he can still sort of find, find some common ground and work with him on various things? Uh, the President still feels uh, that if we can have a good relationship with Russia at some point, that that's a good thing for the world. But at the same time, this President uh, is going to be tough on Russia until we see some changes in their behavior, just as we've done um, every day over the last year and as we've outlined multiple times before, both from the President uh, and as I've done from this podium on many occasions. John, uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, your question is on the foreign policy front. Um, given the situation in Syria and your statement today, uh, could the President be in the process of forming an alliance with President Macron in France and Prime Minister May in Britain, not unlike that envisioned by the previous administration with France and Britain when the first reports of chemical weapons came out? I well, certainly have great relationship with uh, both countries and are continuing conversations with uh, both uh, the UK as well as France and uh, hope to work with all of our allies and partners in a response. And the Sorry, thing second. Question. Is uh, Prime Minister Orban, uh, an admirer of the president who has said many kind things about him, won a landslide re election? Will the president call him, and are there any plans to extend? an invitation for a state visit or a working visit to Prime Minister Orban. I'm not aware of a scheduled call at this time, but if there is one, we'll keep you posted and likely have a readout to follow. John Decker. Thanks a lot, Sarah. Today is the first day on the job for John Bolton as the National Security Advisor. Perhaps you can bring him out here one time and he can take our questions. Here, here. Uh, my I'll question, be happy to tag him in at some point. Please do. Uh, I wanted to ask you about some comments that he made about Syria back in 2013 on Fox and Friends. He said, I think if I were a member of Congress, I would vote against an authorization to use force in Syria. He continued, I don't think it is in America's interests. I don't think we should, in effect, take sides in the Syrian conflict. Is that a point of view that Ambassador Bolton is bringing to the table now as National Security Advisor? Uh, the point of view that matters most uh, here at the White House, as you well know, is the President's. And as Ambassador Bolton himself has said, uh, he's certainly here to serve as an advisor, but ultimately the decisions uh, being made are the President's, and the comments that he's made previously are personal, and he's here to carry out the President's agenda. Josh. Uh, Scott Drew, the EPA Administrator, uh, often flew first class, uh, had a $50 a night rental on Capitol Hill, and tripled the size of his security detail. Um, can you explain what the President meant when he said rent was about market rate, travel expenses okay, security spending somewhat more, but it was okay? How does, wh why did he say that? 
Uh, he was referencing a um, report done by the EPA, which we are continuing to review. Um, but in that, it cites that the apartment was at market value and goes into other details, and that was what the president was reflecting. And I, on Capitol Hill with the lobby, said it was at market value, according to the EPA? Uh, yes, according to the Office of Government Ethics. And travel spending okay. Uh, is the president okay with cabinet secretaries taking first-class travel and tripling the size of their security detail? Is that okay? Again, we are um, reviewing the specifics of each of those components. Uh, I know there was a much uh, larger number of security issues uh, surrounding the EPA administrator than in the past, but for specific questions uh, beyond that, I'd refer you back to the EPA. Were those security issues or were those included in police reports? Because uh, there's been reporting that across the country no one found the death threats or, you know, police reports that jeopardized his life or safety. What are you talking about? When uh, talking about I, can't, I can't comment about police reports, but I do know that there have been a uh, number of questions raised. And again, uh, we're continuing to review that. Until that's complete, I'd refer you back to the EPA beyond that. Sarah, Sarah. Uh, Sarah two questions on Syria. With all that's happened with Russia, uh, with the sanctions last week and now these strong words associating Russia with the Syrian attack, is there an expectation or a feeling that relations, diplomatic relations with Russia, with this administration, with our country, with Russia, are eroding? Uh, we've been very tough on Russia for quite some time. I think the only people maybe that didn't understand that or see that uh, were members of the press who continually questioned to that. Uh, now I, I guess people are concerned that we're being tough on Russia. I guess I'm confused on which way you want to have it. Uh, the president would like to have a good relationship, but that's going to deter be determined by the actions that Russia takes, and um, we're going to continue pushing forward. And second question, the, the, the items on the table um, beyond strikes, is there um, a thought or, or on the table regime change with Assad? And also, where does diplomacy play in this? even with the strikes and all of this that you're saying is on the table? I'm not going to get ahead of any potential options that the president may or may not take, but I can tell you that we're reviewing a wide range and a number of different options. Dave? Thanks, Sarah. At the Cabinet meeting this morning, the president was talking about the potential impact of Chinese tariffs on American farmers, and he said the farmers are patriots for being willing to take a hit. Um, and then he said, we'll make it up to them. What did he mean? Uh, the president has worked with his team to determine how best to respond to China's attack on American farmers, and he's asked the Department of Agriculture to protect our farmers, and we'll present a plan on specifics, specifics of that shortly. Would you consider, uh, like, extra crop insurance subsidies that are often put in the farm bill for market uh, fluctuations? I'm not going to get ahead of uh, potential options, but the president has asked the Department of Agriculture to come back with some specifics that we'll pronounce or announce to you guys shortly. Hallie. Thanks, Sarah. I've got two for you. First on Syria, um, you talked about the idea of, of the possible military option being a deterrent. Last year, we heard something very similar from the president, who called that chemical attack last year to front of humanity, said it cannot be tolerated. Is the White House worried that Assad is now making a mockery of President Trump's threats? Uh, not at all. What our concern is about uh, is the fact that the Assad regime has taken an outrageous action against innocent civilians. Our focus is on responding to that, um, and that's what we're looking at. And then I wanted to follow up on something from last week, just because we didn't get a chance to, and specifically your comments on um, citing the L.A. Times article when asked, uh, I think by John here, about the president's rape remarks at that uh, event last week. Uh, that didn't actually back up the president's claims. You actually, last fall, admonished reporters to make sure that we hold ourselves to a high standard of accuracy. Does the president also need to be held to that same standard of accuracy? Absolutely. And as I said uh, that day, um, it has been well documented that a number of those individuals going back even to 2014, where there were uh, multiple articles and studies uh, put out that said 80 percent of the women that make that uh, that go through that process and uh, try to enter the country are raped through that process. Um, something certainly that I think should be concerning to all of us and certainly something that the president has voiced concern about. And what about the voter fraud claim that the president made last week as well, also not backed up by evidence? I'm sorry, can you be more specific? Yeah, the president talked about those claims of voter fraud again. It's something he's repeatedly brought up. It's just given the idea when words matter, particularly in moments of a lot of international pressure, like this moment right now what his standard of accuracy is when he's Certainly, speaking to the American public. 
the president still strongly feels that there was a large amount of voter fraud and attempted to do a thorough review of it, uh, but a lot of the states didn't want to cooperate and participate. Uh, we certainly know that there were a large number of incidents was reported, but we can't be sure exactly how much because we weren't able to conduct the full review that the president wanted because a number of states did not want to cooperate and refused to participate. Mr. Mayor. Yeah, two questions regarding Scott Pruitt. Um, how long is the review going to take um, that the White House is conducting? Uh, I'm not going to lay out an arbitrary timeline, but it's something that we're looking into and continuing to you know, take under consideration. For years. I mean, I, obviously we want to get through this process as quickly as we can, uh, but I'm not going to just make up a time frame here today. Chief of Staff John Kelly recommend that Pruitt be fired. Uh, I'm not going to get into any private conversations. Blake, welcome back. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, I want to ask you about uh, Mark Zuckerberg headed to the Hill to testify. This administration has often talked about deregulation and the deregulatory efforts that the president and this administration has undergone. But there's a question of whether or not Facebook should be regulated. Uh, does the White House have a stance on whether or not Facebook should be regulated, and so what is that position? I don't have a specific policy announcement on that front, but I think uh, we're all looking forward to that testimony today. What does the president? Um, what does the president make of Mark Zuckerberg? Does he have an opinion of him? Larry Kudlow was fairly critical of him uh, both on Fox News Sunday yesterday, and and when I asked him about uh, Zuckerberg this morning. Uh, does the president have any sort of opinion on Mark Zuckerberg? Uh, you know, I haven't asked him directly. I'd have to check and get back to you. Take one last question, Jim. Is there anything that the uh, Syrians can do at this point to prevent military action from being taken? Uh, I'm not going to get ahead of what actions we may or may not take, uh, so I can't really answer that question. Um, but we'll keep you posted when we have something on that front. And if I can follow up, uh, just because, you know, you've been saying this over the last couple of weeks that nobody has been tougher on Russia and Vladimir Putin than this president. Isn't there some hyperbole in that when you say that? I mean, obviously, Ronald Reagan said tear down this wall. Uh, John Kennedy put up a blockade around uh, Cuba. Uh, Carter boycotted the 1980 Summer Olympics in Moscow. Obviously, there have been presidents over the course of the last several decades who have been tougher on this president, also given the fact that this president up until just recently wasn't really willing to criticize Vladimir Putin by name. We all saw that over the weekend and, and took that as, as a new development. Yeah, you cite like one example for each of those individuals. Let me list off just a few of the actions that the president has taken that previous administrations haven't. Uh, the Treasury Department issued new sanctions on numerous individuals and entities in Russia. The president's continued other, uh, other sanctions on Russia's malicious cyber activity in response to election hacking. He's expelled 60 Russian operatives from the United States and closed two consulates. The president's issued four statements condemning Russia's poisoning of U.K. citizens on U.K. soil. He's authorized the sale of lethal aid to Ukraine. He's authorized military strikes against the Assad regime in Syria and has repeatedly called out Russia's actions on that front. We've also exported energy to our allies in Eastern Europe. Look, I think that uh, you named off one or two things. Uh, it is without dispute that this administration and this president has done a number of things to be tough on Russia. So um, the and says that Vladimir Putin may pay a price for what's happening in Syria right now. After all, the Russians were uh, supposed to be responsible for helping the Syrians remove the chemical weapons from Syria. When the president says that they may pay a price, we should take that to the bank? Uh, I'm not going to get ahead, once again, of any actions that the United States may or may not take, but I think the president's been clear uh, about what his intention is. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great day. Sanctions on Russia if no one's been tougher than he has. <laughs>